On our podcast show today, we are going to be talking about that time that Lin Fast tried to reach me. They called you? They, they texted me. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, they slid into my text. No, they, they <laughs> slid into my text. <laughs> so the okay. other day, okay, as I was going through all the spam messages that right. end up in my texts these mm -hmm. days, mm -hmm. um, I got one from Lin Fast. Yeah. Uh, Is that because we actually did the show about Lin Fast and we just totally... Like, <laughs> I don't know. It was it was from their Park Royal location in Vancouver. They, uh, I guess, one of their eager salespeople found my phone number because uh, we had driven that right. vehicle okay, back yeah, yeah. at oh, the uh, right, right, fully right. charged show in Vancouver last September. And uh, he's like, "Hey, how's it going? Now uh, we got some vehicles. We'd love to drive that over to you and give you a, a drive." Okay, and I'm like, "Hey, <laughs> Candy, that's his name." Okay, I'm. I'm sorry that it was you that reached out to me because <laughs> okay, well, uh, if you search on Google, right. and you Google worst EV of 2023, yeah. you will find a podcast of me talking about your flagship Vinfast VF8, which is your mm -hmm. SUV that you offered to let me drive. I'm very familiar with the vehicle and I would not drive it again. <laughs> is that what you said? <laughs> More or less. <laughs> okay. And... Uh, he asked, oh, um, uh, can you send me the link to your podcast? I'm like, sure, here it is. Sorry. And uh, he watched it. He watched it, which I'm impressed. Okay. Thank you. Thank okay. you for the watch, by the way. Appreciate it. Right. Um, he addressed everything and basically said it was all true. Oh, so he actually agreed. He agreed. Yep. Okay, wow. There was only quite one uh... thing that he wasn't quite sure of, which was the steering wheel, which I thought was a, it was just a little small and weird and wonky for me. I, I don't know if, if that's warranted. I just felt like it needed the larger steering wheel in such a large vehicle. It felt like the size of my smaller vehicle. Okay. I'm just saying. Because with a larger vehicle, having a larger steering wheel is obviously a little bit better for me. Uh, anyway, right. um, he's like, yep, we addressed most of those points and everything like that. And uh, yeah, I, I think I think we, we, we nailed them pretty good. So what he's saying is he's actually fixed those issues for 2024. Oh, he and he didn't fix oh, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, you know, like the guys at VinFast somewhere in Vietnam probably took all the feedback and all the uh, um, deserved criticism and made things better for the 2024 model. Yeah. And okay. what we said is actually reflected with other people's uh, podcasts and vlogs and stuff. We like that, were right? bang on. Okay. We were bang okay, on. So anyone, we, yeah. anyone that apologized for them in the 2023 model really, really did not do their job because they, it was bad. It was, it was bad. not good. It was not a drive of, drivable vehicle and it needed to be fixed before anyone should take them seriously. Right. It's not a cheap vehicle. It's a it lot of money. Cheap. It wasn't cheap. I, right? It's a 60,000. It was 50, almost 60,000. Yeah. For a SUV style vehicle that is the size of a Kia Sorento Santa Fe uh, that doesn't drive anywhere near as well as either of those vehicles, by the way. Okay. Um, the other competition in that price range is obviously the Model Y. Why mm -hmm. would you spend? <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> like, honest, honestly, why would you spend that much money on a vehicle that's got yeah. such poor reviews and not buy the Tesla for that price? Even though Tesla has some, you know, CEO issues to work out, <laughs> but still, <laughs> I mean, even even the VW. The the ID four ID four is yeah, about the same price. That's what I'm driving, and it's, it's a really good car. Yeah. So yeah. of all those vehicles, and, and now we've even got the EV nine, sixty thousand dollar vehicle. That's EV nine. That's the uh, Kia. The Kia. Right? Okay. Yeah, right? yeah. 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 So with all that competition in that space, and the vehicle being the way it is, um, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I said basically, hey. Um, Thanks for letting me know that you guys were working on things. That's great. And, and then I proceeded to watch a bunch of videos that basically said that they made it better. But it's just merely okay. So it's mediocre. It's a mediocre vehicle overall. All right. Very, okay. very, very mediocre. Uh, MKBHD, the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the, the killer of EV companies, we'll get to that, also said that they're trying. Trying. They're trying. Yeah. I right? mean, it's, it's, it's that, you know, saying, you know, you got to fail to learn and grow. Yeah. And uh, that platform that they that they built on, the VF8, was never supposed to be an EV. It was supposed to be an a, a, a internal combustion gas vehicle. Oh, really? Right. Because 
You sat in the back seat. You yeah. noticed that bump in the middle? Yeah, I, I knew. No EV has that. No, uh, yeah. I thought, hold on. What, what is this thing for? Is this for the shaft? Or what was it for? Unnecessary. It's, there is no shaft in an that's EV. That's what I mean. And so what are they they using the same chassis car for, yep. uh, as an yep. ICE car and yep. then they put it into an EV. That's why there's no trunk space in the back. Oh, isn't there? Yeah, because there's supposed to be a gas tank under there. Oh. Uh, right? If they okay. if they had redesigned the vehicle from the ground up to be an EV, I think that they would have had a much, much better experience and mm. a better launch. Instead, they have a kind of a Frankenstein vehicle out there that is now uh, better but it's still a Frankenstein vehicle. I I have every confidence that they're going to learn from the situation yeah. and they're going to get the 2026, 20, 2027, <laughs> correct? Seven. That they build a new platform on it okay. because they really need a dedicated EV platform that maximizes the battery uh, that actually has sufficient cargo space because right now the, the, the criticisms of the entire platform is not only what we said, which still exists to some degree, not as bad yeah. uh, in the newer versions, the 2024 and up. But everyone mm. is also saying that it's highly inefficient. Uh, it doesn't have the the couple motors, which means that both motors run at the same time, so it's very inefficient. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, it also doesn't have um, sufficient, like I said, sufficient cargo room because there's a shaft area built in that's not <laughs> necessary, and also no no trunk space in the back. It's actually smaller than it should be because. They're, they didn't take care of the gas tank situation. They could use up all that space for storage. That's true. That's all right? True. So it doesn't, the, the floor is there. It's really, really high. If it was lower, that would be really, really good. Yeah. So you're trying. Of, of, <laughs> you're trying. You, you tried to call me. You tried to get me to drive your vehicle. And I said, basically, no. <laughs> but I did say out there is that, hey, if you really do want me to see if these uh, claims are true, you can get your media relation team to back you up, Andy, and uh, I would be happy to drive your vehicle um, on a short road trip somewhere. So, yeah, let me know. Yeah. Call me. A, a good long road trip would actually find out if the car is drivable. It would drivable. give a better image of whether or not this vehicle is worth anyone's and time. The, uh, when, I, when we say road trip, we're talking 2,000 uh, kilometers plus. Yeah, that's a road trip. Two, yeah. 2,000 kilometers The length plus. of England. <laughs> 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 that's, that's, yes. Yeah, that's true. That's true. All right. On to other topics okay. here. Okay. Uh, I was on the internet one day. Okay. And I found out yeah. that Elon was lied to. Oh my God. Has he lied to everybody? Yes. So <laughs> the crown prince of lying has actually been lied to in return, but not in such a malicious way. More like how a king uh, is in charge of his subjects and none of his subjects want to upset the king. Kind so, of way. So they tell him white lies. They tell him white <laughs> lies because what has happened is that Elon has been going by data yeah. about the efficacy of full self driving. True. Okay. Right? So, yep, yep. So, it's been going on about for years. So, yeah, okay. From the numbers that he has been getting, he's yeah. like, wow, this is very encouraging. Okay. Full self driving, yeah. no problem with any of these vehicles. There's two parts to this. Number one, full self driving um, was actually internally optimized and tweaked for not only the routes that he took personally, but also for all of the influencers and YouTubers that review full self-driving. So there's short distances, very controlled. And, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. What? The routes that he takes and yeah. the routes that all of the influencers took were internally optimized. Okay. All right. So it's a fixed thing, right? It's they made those... It's like optimizing a benchmark to run perfectly. Oh, okay, okay. So they now you understand, right? So they tweaked it. They tweaked it, and uh, I guess he's saying he didn't know. Oh, so he was I'm going sure. by the efficacy of his trips on his routes only. <laughs> okay. And the, and the data from everyone else that was on the internet and yeah. as an influencer and everything and their experiences that were perfect. So he has scores that say, hey, this is going to work. This is great. And that's why he was so bullish about robo taxis and everything because his cars were performing so well. And that's why he was saying, hey, you should really drive it. And that's why they're, they're, he asked his team to push so hard that mm. full self driving, you got to get in on the ground level. It's only $6,000 right now. It's going up to 10000 soon. So everyone bought into the full self driving beta lie. Okay. Because so, apparently he was lied to so by the data. It, so really, doesn't, it doesn't work properly. No. So the emperor, the king, 
was lied to uh, under duress from his his employees were under duress of telling him the truth. So they they, they chose not to tell him the truth. <laughs> Otherwise, you get fired. Otherwise, you get fired <laughs> or worse. He 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 laid off it. He fired his entire charging team. Uh, they're slowly hiring them back, but still. <laughs> The amount of disruption to business operations that type of thing causes on your bread and butter competitive advantage is like insurmountable. Yeah, it's, I don't know what's happening with that company. Because right now, like a couple of, well, it's only been a month ago, their, their stock was like down really rock bottom. Oh, it's on. It's, it's, it's gone back there. up. It's gone back up. But why? <laughs> I well, think. the other thing too is that um, this this just surfaced is that full self driving yeah. was supposed to also be capable on mm. all of the all of the Elon mobiles that were using hardware 3.0. Yeah, I think 3.0 you, in some respects, but yeah, 3.0 3.0 launched okay. uh, I think last year. Right, I think 4.0 is on the horizon. And what it sounds like is that nope, full self driving will never ever run on three, maybe not even on four. You're probably looking at generation five until any of the stuff that has been imagined will run. Well, at I, all. I saw a, a news article <laughs> that uh, Elon is actually building a supercomputer center in one of their gigafactories. It's probably installing shitloads of like NVIDIA accelerators, whatever. Jensen will be happy. And <laughs> yeah. NVIDIA uh, shareholders will be happy. But still, three, four, you're never going to get it. You spend six grand, 10 grand, like, like three and four. Are in vehicles that are rolling up. The, that's, that's, they're at dealerships right now. That's probably why he's using that money to build this data center. This hardware's in cyber trucks right now. <laughs> that's what I mean. The None of these vehicles will ever be self full self driving. <laughs> these guys, I mean, who paid six thousand, ten thousand, whatever for the self driving, it's actually never going to be self driving. He's no. using that money to build a data center, this supercomputer data center in the Gigafactory, in order to do self driving in the future. <laughs> with your money <laughs> with your money suckers <laughs> it's a beta for a reason and you believe everything he said no <sighs> no, no um i'm sorry i feel i feel very bad for people that were lied to i don't feel bad that elon was lied to because heads would have rolled if someone told them the truth <laughs> yeah it, he's that type of seems like that type of person well, he's got the satellite infrastructure in place. He's got like well over two thousand satellites up there. Yeah. So, so <laughs> but uh, maybe he'll force <laughs> force someone to actually work all night, sleep in his underwear, <laughs> and make it work. Because um, th th this this cannot be. It, this is actually false advertising now. Yeah, and that also puts a question mark on robo taxis. Yeah, right? like it's never going to work, right? So. Uh, oh, speaking of uh, failures, uh, I don't know if it is a failure or not. Mm -hmm. Depends on who you are. The Cybertruck. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the Cybertruck is called the Cybertruck, but it's not very good at truck things. We've already seen a number of videos where very old 10-year-old pickup trucks like Dodge Rams and um, Ford F-350s and stuff like that have been out pulling this state-of-the-art vehicle. Right? Yeah. In doing truck things. In fact, many, many Ford F 150s and, and other older vehicles have been pulling it out of ditches in places. Yeah, helping them helping come, them out. Yeah. You know, being being a good neighbor, helping them out, <laughs> and then laughing at them. So uh <laughs> as a truck, not doing so hot. And uh, the recalls just keep piling on. The first recall was of course the brake pedal, which they've since fixed, but basically it was glued on. Really? You know, just glued right on, right? So when it gets really, really hot in Texas and other hot places, it just melts and slides forward, lodging the pedal in a uh, accelerated position, oh. which is not good. Um, and then there was the issue of the patina, right? Oh, yeah. The patina, also known as rust. So stainless steel doesn't rust, apparently. Um, Elon said that, but they didn't use the right quality of stainless steel to actually claim that. Yeah, and you also, need high quality stainless steel. Stainless steel, no matter what it is, will eventually rust. It is still steel. Steel is still in its makeup, right? It will be more resistant, but you still have to take good care of it. And you have to, yeah. you have to treat it a certain way. And also coming up, you remember that huge wiper? Mm. Oh yeah, yeah, what happened to that? Yeah, it's, apparently it, it's uh, malfunctioning. And what does it do? Um, I <laughs> Randomly <guess>, wipes. <laughs> I. I think it's too much torque failing. 
Um, um, wow. Uh, it, it's it's not a good situation. I, I have to find I, a little I bit heard, more. I heard I heard that the 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 oh, we call it we call it the trunk or the boot, right? The oh, that was a bad one. Um, this yeah. is a safety issue. Safety issue. That one. Um, you know how the trunk is huge. Yeah. Right, uh, yeah. and in most vehicles, there's a safety mechanism that once it, uh, once it senses pressure in the opposite direction, it will release the latch. Yeah, of course. People yeah. have been testing the Cybertruck's uh, trunk, and they've been putting carrots, wieners, other fruits and vegetables in it, <laughs> and they've been smushing them because <laughs> it just doesn't know that there is something under there that, in which case, it should retract. This is standard procedure in most vehicles that have a uh, a motorized rear trunk or 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 front, right? Yeah. So eventually, you know, Elon believers, you know, Tesla faithful, they've been putting their hands in there, their fingers in there, and they've actually been, you know, like hurt. <laughs> yeah, broken arms, hurt. broken <laughs> broken arms, and other things, right? Oh, my. so that's been happening, and uh, huh, huh, yeah, 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 guys, uh, don't believe everything you hear. Uh, that Cybertruck ain't cheap either. It's not cheap. And um, um, still, I, I think it's, I guess, still early stage. Yeah. I mean, why would you want to spend that much on a truck, which doesn't do truck things? Yeah. And I was correct. All 11,688 uh, cyber trucks, once it starts raining, that motor, because it's under such enormous pressure and torque from that one single wiper, Wipe, yeah. uh, it is... The motor controller failed due to excessive electrical current required to drive it because it requires so much torque to move. Yeah, because it's, <laughs> it's, it's one wiper and it's like double my arm length and it's just doing Do this. we not know physics? <laughs> That's a huge lever to run on the fulcrum. The fulcrum is the motor. The motor needs to be extremely powerful and torquey to be even, even be able to move that thing. So imagine if it's, it's at full speed and and it's on a a, a day where it's oh, just a little bit warm yeah. so it gets streaky and manage it, and if you were in a heavy rainstorm it's it's going to go crazy right yep at full speed at this length it's it's going to be crazy so <laughs> that's been happening and also um all of the under undelivered cyber trucks uh, many of them have been get, have been having issues with the adhesive that his for applying some yeah. of the the trim and everything like that that's been just coming off because of the heat, um, yeah. but left out in the open. Okay, what's what's the recall? What's the uh, other big recall that they had to do? The Cybertruck was it? it the the Cybertruck. The main one was the pedal. Pedal, right? Okay. Uh, the other one, I think, I think, hopefully, it's been resolved. But the motor closing okay. on people's uh, appendages oh, and yeah. breaking them. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, and of course, the patina issue, the 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 rusting and everything like that. You can't take it through a car wash because it'll just oh. have issues. So you can't wash it. Right, yeah, you wash it by hands. Yeah, wash it by hand. Um, some people have not had these issues or have chosen to ignore them. Uh, one individual who mm. uh, who works who uh, used to be the uh, the founder of Voodoo PC. Oh, really? Yeah, Voodoo PC, who uh, became uh, who was bought by HP. Uh, he also uh, had a had a um, cryptocurrency company called Unicorn. Mm. Uh, Raul sued. He actually bought his. He had it wrapped. Right. And he's getting new wheels for it. He seems very happy with it. He drove from California, uh, drove from Seattle all the way up to Calgary and back. Oh, okay. And he seemed happy with it, but you know, like he's only had it for a short period of time. So it who says that he won't have the issues coming up? Well, he's been driving in good weather, I suppose. Yeah. It's been very good weather. Yeah. It's been yeah. very good weather, right? So and and also, but he hates his uh, Ford Raptor. What? Yeah, what is that? The Ford Raptor? It's what? a pickup truck. Yeah, why is that? The, why does he hate it? Because it's a piece of crap, apparently. <laughs> and this is not. But I've I've seen a, a lot of um, uptake of uh, other EV trucks now, uh, pickup trucks. Yeah. Um, the Lightning. The F Lightning is, is 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 one of the top sellers. It still is. It's not it's, bad actually. I most cities are getting it as their utility vehicle because it's going to save them a ton of money. Yeah, and I although it may not perform as big or better as a bigger uh, truck, but still. Uh, it's it's quite popular. Uh, it's very popular because yeah. it's easy to get. Uh, also, fleet fleet sales in in Ford is very aggressive and strong, mm. and uh, that's re the reason why it. And, and and you know what? It it looks like a truck. It looks like an yeah, F one fifty. It does look it's good. Easy. It's easy to transition from gas F one fifty to EV yeah, F one fifty. Yeah, and okay. it, it does look good too. It, I like it. It looks okay. It looks like a truck. Yeah. Okay. It's a truck that does <laughs> truck things better than the Cybertruck. <laughs> Um, anyway, speaking of trucks, um, 
have you heard the news? Your yeah. Volkswagen company uh, oh. is, uh, is, is, is giving up software because they do it bad. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I Tell us about that. your software issue and okay, then we'll get into so, this. So when we had the uh, Tiguan, is it yeah. Tiguan? The old uh, other style of uh, combustion engine um, SUV. It, it, anyway, my wife's driving it and occasionally she had like issues with the dash yes. and the control and the touchscreen and that kind of stuff, right? <laughs> yeah. So for example, uh, the GPS with the come off. Yeah. So she doesn't know where she is. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's not uh, good. And, you know, driving on maps and all that kind of stuff. And sometimes um, the radio just, just wouldn't work on certain channels, right? Just yeah. wouldn't, it just wouldn't save the channels. Yes. And things like that. And uh, anyway, so we, we obviously sold that and then we got, mis- we got ourselves the ID4. Yes. And that was better. And it was all touch screen. Yes. Right. It was all touch screen. That's, there's no dials. There's no, you know, little twiddly knobs. Uh, and then what was, happened? They had to touch paddle, kind of touch sensitive paddles and whatever they call them. Um, yeah, it was it was okay. It was great. Um, one thing though, do uh, w- would recommend and do remind people who move over from the traditional cars to EVs is the 12 volt battery, right? So that's not included in your so-called EV battery. That's EV batteries for the motors only really, right? So anyway, um, of course, we have a, a new EV. We need to put a new dash cam in there, right? For protection. You know, protection. protection. And also uh, funny memes from Richmond drivers. <laughs> yeah. You want to say- just, just so you know, you Richmond wanna... drivers, they're not necessarily uh, bad drivers in the sense that they will kill you. It's more comical. Like yeah. they don't hurt anyone but themselves usually or the car. Or old buildings. Or buildings or, or sidewalks <laughs> they, that they... should not be driven on. They... Just so you know. Yeah. So it's not- it's more like it's more like drivers that are more lost <laughs> and and don't know how to get out of a sticky situation. That describes Richmond drivers. Whereas in Texas and other in Florida, those people want to kill you. <laughs> Different. Anyway, continue. Yeah. So uh, we we installed a new dash cam and of course front cam and the rear thing and we wired it up us, ourselves and uh, we were pulling power from the cigarette lighter. I don't know what you call it. Twelve volt. Right. Yep. So, um, so we thought, okay, there's a power button on the dash cam. We switch off every, you know, we finish driving, we lock the car, we make sure that the power is off on mm-hmm. the actual webcam, the switch power off. Uh, turns out that one day uh, my wife was driving down to one of the main roads, yep. Granville Street, whatever, and suddenly the car lost power. Oh, no. Right. And, and she's like, oh, what's, what's going on here? So, she luckily, she had enough power to indicate to go off the side of the road, yep. park up there. Turns out, uh, that the 12 volt battery died. Oh, and yep. once that dies on an EV, everything is gone. Same as in a gas vehicle. If everything you lose, is gone. If you lose that in a gas vehicle, it's the same. So but your your experience is not is not an EV issue. It's actually an any vehicle issue. Yeah. Because every vehicle has a 12 volt, even a Tesla. Yeah. So the only way that, uh, well, this is what the Volkswagen um, guy, technician said, uh, that it could be the web, uh, the webcam, the dash cam, it's drawing all the, power from the yeah. 12 volt and i thought well we, we switched it off turns out it could be it could be never said it was it could be that even if you switch off the webcam it still maybe drawing some power it has a parking mode or it's parasitic yeah. loss because so, the it still has a red light on the thing right so the, you, if right? you have a cigarette lighter kind of connector yeah. on the 12 volt it's sure drawing power you just pull it out right because yeah. otherwise it, it could be it could be drawing power and uh it, i think one of the reasons it could be is because it has a built-in gps Oh, so it's already it's already on. It's still on, right? Even if it's, it's on off. all the time, right? So make yeah. sure what whatever type of ca- a dash cam, because some dash cams doesn't have GPS, right? Yeah. Uh, whatever dash cam you have, if you're not sure, always pull it out from the twelve volt mains. Make sure um, twelve mains, twelve volt or the cigarette lighter. Make sure that's off. Pull it out. Um, save yourself because uh, otherwise it'll draw your draw your twelve volt battery out. So, that's with any vehicle, not just an EV thing. You just yeah. seem to have been unlucky as uh, yeah. Under, well, under of course, my wife doesn't realize that. Yeah. You know, like I so. have a I have a dual channel um, dash cam that yeah. is very powerful. It's 4K f- front and rear. Yeah, uh, it's made by Thinkware, and I actually have it plugged into my uh, not into my mains, but into my OBD3 reader, which actually has 12 volt uh, connectors on it. Yeah. It powers the thing. And also because the, the dash cam has a low voltage mode, it will actually uh, sense that it's going below a certain point. It will shut itself oh, off it internally. Oh, right. so and it will do it. all of that for you. So if you want it to be on the entire time, um, you need to have it professionally installed with that uh, capability or have a backup battery. A lot of companies actually provide 
backup batteries that will actually come off of the, 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 the dash cam, but it will also allow that buffer so that it doesn't go into your yeah. battery. Yeah. And that is probably the reason why I also invest in a, I won't say more expensive, but a, a premium brand uh, dash cam. You can, you can basically mount any of these types of dash. They use the same connector. So all of them will run with a OBD3 adapter. Um, just check with uh, OBD2 adapter. Just check with your uh, your local dash cam store. Mm. They'll have all the information out of scope for us. But in scope will be the Volkswagen deal, yeah. which yeah. is uh, actually amazing. Um, Volkswagen realizing that they don't do software well, as you figured out. Mm. And also uh, people want buttons back because they um, they were actually- Buttons are good. Lots of complaints uh, about their full touch screen touch uh, on all their vehicles uh, out right now. They've gone, they're going back to buttons. They're going to uh, reallocate resources to develop their internal combustion engine market a little bit more in the interim, but they're sending all of the software development duties over to Rivian mm -hmm. in exchange for five billion US dollars. Wow! So Rivian's That's a lot getting of money. Rivian's getting five billion dollars. Yep. To help Volkswagen develop software for Volkswagen, is that what you're saying? To develop a software platform that will work for them. Because right. it's business as usual for for Rivian, they're ramping up. So 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 Rivian, if we say if Rivian software is good. Rivian software is good. It stands alone. It doesn't need anything else. It runs on the vehicle itself. Rivian also powers all of the Amazon and, trucks. Rivian also uh, powers right. okay. all of the new upcoming uh, trucks that will be uh, okay. deployed for Canada Post. Ah. So, okay. so VW has seen that, hey, you're good at software. They're Help very good at software. Help us out. And yep. then you, there you go for that. Here's $5 billion. Dollars. $5 billion. This is a headache that we don't need to worry about because traditional uh, legacy automakers are extremely crappy at software. <laughs> yeah, they are. So they're <laughs> yeah. taking what little uh, what little resources they have they're putting, they're giving it to the experts to help them with the software. They're going back to buttons because they know buttons very well. And they're actually trying to squeeze as much as they can out of their internal combustion engine um, division with the savings because mm -hmm. they're not constantly throwing money at the fire anymore to, mm -hmm. you know, get some profitability, develop their EV market, and hopefully stay afloat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right? Which, is okay. A, which is a tough gig for them. So how is Rivian doing anyway? Rivian's doing fantastic right now because their shares went up as a result of this deal. Mm -hmm. So if you are uh, holding the bag on Rivian shares and you bought some more, uh, it went up. It went All up. Right. And it's, then, not, it's not record highs, but it still it went up for you. And uh, they're still going ahead with the uh, Rivian R, 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 R2? The R2 Three? is going to be the continuation of the R1 and the R1S. R1S being the uh, SUV. R1, R1T it was the truck. Yeah. Very good truck, by the way. Um, the R1S is probably one of the best uh, SUVs out there right now that looks very good. And then the R2 is going to be a trimmed down version that's more affordable. But the R3 is the one that everyone is looking forward to because that's more of a compact yep. SUV yep. that has a quirky kind of Lada, <laughs> Lada style, you yeah. know, city it's, car like it. No, it's got full range and oh, everything. Yeah. It's capable yeah. of going off road. It just has a unique Lada look. Okay. Right. Okay. Lada as in like, it looks like a square angular box. Boxy-ish, but still kind of <laughs> like, it's hard to describe. Yeah. Look up a Lada. Look, look it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so great looking vehicle, quirky, fun. Uh, will definitely take uh, market share away from the the Subaru crowd, right? Because they love that kind of off roady kind of uh, do everything vehicle. Yeah. So the Solterra that Subaru is selling right now, oh, man, that that's not a good car, by the way. Oh, it's yeah, the same I, as the BZ X4, which I've, is the Toyota. I've seen a lot of them uh, in the uh, show show showroom. Yeah, they can't they, sell they, because just, they're not good. Yeah, this lined up, man. And nobody's yeah. no one wants them. <laughs> <laughs> no one wants them. Uh, it, they 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 charge slow in the winter. They don't have oh, wow. very good. The battery management is not very good. It's based on BYD model, so oh. they didn't even develop it. It's a it's a China platform, which not necessarily a bad thing. It's just it it's a compliance vehicle for for Subaru and for mm. um, Toyota to stay relevant because yeah. you know how Toyota's talking. They're all about hybrids, <laughs> okay. and that's why they. They had two CEOs leave because they couldn't get it right. <laughs> mm. So Rivian's anyway. going ahead with uh, R2 and R3. 
Oh yeah, that's good. That's oh yeah, good. so because okay. $5 billion okay. will help them get those production that's lines true. in that's place true. and they'll be able to build those vehicles in the same factories that they're building right now. They put on, they put on hold a, uh, a factory uh, build in, I think it was Georgia, where it was going to be a massive factory to build mm. the R3s, o- R3s or R2s only, but they can now do them in the factory that right. they have okay. to okay. save some capital. But this gives them the breathing room that they yeah. need yeah. to actually keep going. Because you were saying that the, they were losing money for every vehicle they were selling. Well, Ford does that as well too. This is all R and D recoup, mm, right? Mm. But the R three, R two, and the R one is they're the, all based on similar technologies. And that's the that's the money maker. That's mm. the R three is going to be the money maker. R two right. even, right? Okay. So all good things for Rivian, and thank you, uh, Volkswagen, for keeping <laughs> them going. Uh, I can't wait to get an affordable uh, Rivian because those vehicles look fantastic. Now, speaking of affordable vehicles, the race is on for the twenty five thousand dollar EV. Yeah, tell me more about that because because uh, EVs are people say traditionally they're more expensive than gas combustion uh, cars, right? Because they they're are 60,000, that's the kind of average price, but now they get $25,000 ish yeah. dollars. They're, How is that possible? Well, there's a lot of uh, economies of scale to be figured okay. out because the battery is still the most, uh, most expensive part of yeah. any EV. I mean, everything else is like, standard it's the same mm. as another vehicle but the battery is what costs the most uh batteries can be now that we know batteries can be 99 percent recycled and even you know five-year-old evs still have almost 100 percent of their battery life um these these vehicles are going to stick around so yeah. in the secondary market is where you can find most of the under thirty thousand dollar evs in yeah. fact my bolt ev uh which i bought for 28 is still selling for 28 oh really because how, how it kept that? its value how, how old is it though um, it, 2017 models, 24, 20, 26. That's literally seven. I bought mine for 28 and I traded it back in for 23. That's like 20. I drove it for one year. Wow. What a great <laughs> deal for me, right? <laughs> so when I got my Nero EV, I paid 0% interest and I haggled because at that time, not everyone was crazy about right. EVs. So I got a deal. Okay. <laughs> so um, now the industry is pushing mm-hmm. on and this is, I think, um, this is, I think, something that Tesla really missed out on because uh, Elon was lied to that they were supposed to be building a $25,000 EV. I mean, if anyone could they do were. it, they it were, would have been Tesla. They were, they were planning to sell yep. a, a very cheaper, uh, affordable Model EV. 2. Model, yeah, Model Maybe. 2. Maybe. I don't know. And uh, what happened? You Instead, know? it became a robo-taxi and, uh, because Elon thought that his information was good. Oh, okay. He was lied to. Um, <laughs> But whatever, Elon made a mistake. So who's making these $25,000 EVs? The race is on between Hyundai, which is putting out Hyundai. what's called a, uh, they call it the Intru? No, Intru. Um, yeah, it's called the Casper concept. Casper. Uh, it's kind of a boxy. It's very much like the R3 from Rivian, but just a little bit smaller. So it's a compact SUV. Uh, it's kind of a city kind of dwelling vehicle car. with about 219 uh, miles of range. So 315 kilometers. So so smaller range. Smaller range. But it's not really designed for off a uh, long distance. Driving. Not more city, right? Not this one. Uh, this the, the 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 Hyundai one is going to be 25 to 23k starting price with rebates is going to be as low as 15k depending on where wow. you're where you're getting it so it's yeah. meant to be a low cost um introduction into the ev space with adequate range charges they say that it's going to be 10 to 80 percent mm. 30 minutes really good that's right, really, right. really good and it will also support video um um um, um the the grid uh, v2l which is the Transfer of power from the battery pack back to the grid when it's required or back to your home oh. when it's required. So it's like a, the home charging station thing where you... Yeah, it'll send the power back into the grid. Right, okay. Right? So, uh, so for example, if these were all over California during a brownout, it would actually it would actually make sure the brownout never happened. Mm, okay. Right? Okay. Which would be great because yeah. everyone wants to run their AC in California, right? Uh, the other maker is going to be Stellantis. Stellantis is actually Stellantis. working on a Jeep. Uh, that's going to be about 25k. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's going to be, you know, very, very similar to what Hyundai is actually putting out there. Um, it's gonna be looking. It kind of looks like a Jeep Compass kind of okay. thing. So it's kind of boxy looking, fun, more compact. Yeah. Uh, and then what's going to happen? Jeep Renegade. Uh, so Renegade. it's an e-hybrid crossover. It's gonna be an electric version coming to the U.S. sometime in 2025, 2026. And then you know, of course, we got a bunch mm-hmm. of. Uh, 
BYD is really looking forward to bringing their cars in with a yeah. huge tariff because China-made vehicles are going to be uh, taxed accordingly, tariffed accordingly. Yeah. I, I I think EV, although there's like you know pros and cons and sneers and you know yeah. says, I I think uh, overall even my brother he's driving uh, he's got two models uh, yeah. cars uh, he's driving a, a, a BMW i4 yep and also Tesla yes. uh, Model Three I think um, since he switched over because he was in on a gas car before yep. he's actually yeah he says the savings that you get. Is, it's not it's, small. It's not small, and and he's actually just saved literally over two hundred fifty to because pet, petrol. We say petrol in the UK, yeah. right? Gas prices in the UK are very expensive, much more yeah. expensive than the US and the uh, and, and, and Canada. So he's actually saving literally it's like three hundred pounds per month. That's like five hundred plus dollars a month, literally on gas, saving that. Uh, but That's char- almost ten k a year. Yep. And uh, he says he should have he should have switched over much earlier because he does take that car to do a lot of the um, uh, stocks where yeah. you, you go into the, 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 the you know the green groceries and, and buy all the veg yeah. and all that kind of stuff. He does that daily every morning. So he says he does that daily trip and he saves him a lot of money. Yeah. Before, See, every you know. day that an EV hater hates EVs is one extra dollar that he didn't save. Yeah, he he saved a lot. He says hopefully. <laughs> you days. know what you're saying? Yeah. You're only depriving yourself. Right? The, the only By thing, the numbers. Yeah, the only thing that he didn't like, which makes sense, is that the insurance has gone up because he's saying that um, the Tesla, especially the Tesla, is that... Expensive uh, to fix. It is expensive to fix and he can only fix it at Tesla. Yeah. That's it. You yeah. can't go anywhere else. Whereas uh, a BM, you can go to any BM yep. dealership and there's tons of BM dealerships all over the place, yeah. right? You can go to any of those, uh, um, you know, uh, technicians or tech. Uh, Garage, or they call it, um, service centers. Any BMW service center, you can do that there. But whereas Tesla, you can only go to a Tesla, and then that's the only insurance that was spiked up was because of the Tesla. Yeah. yeah. So we talked about Tesla already. Yeah. It ad, ad nauseum, uh, and they missed out on the twenty five k vehicle. Maybe they'll release it. Maybe they won't. Mm-hmm. The plans were apparently in the pipeline, but right now, which other American makers? Because we know Stellantis is actually Dutch. They're not American, just so you know. <laughs> They're home by they, they own a, they own a lot of other yeah. companies. Um, Ford, Ford is yeah. looking at a 25k vehicle. They just launched uh, the Ford Explorer, which is not the same vehicle as you're used to in North America in Europe. Uh, you'll see reviews out there already mm-hmm. uh, of it, uh, and it's a kind of a smaller, more cutesy version of that massive uh, vehicle that a lot of uh, police stations use as their patrol vehicles. Um, it looks nice. I don't have a lot more specs on it, but it's also going to be European spec, so it's hard to transfer. But the vehicle that we know the best is the Bolt EV, and uh, GM says that they're bringing it back. It's going to be a very affordable vehicle, okay. and I love that vehicle. I thought it was fantastic. If they just put a heat pump in it, a few more tweaks, and they they mass produce the heck out of that thing. Is oh my it, god! And Bolt? the and the connectors are the same. For the charging connectors? It's still going to be CCS for most of the vehicles. I don't know if they're moving to mm-hmm. North American charging standard. <laughs> okay. NAX. <laughs> but, you know, even if it is NAX, there would be the ability to backwards compatibility with it with an adapter. Right? But Those I, already exist. I do see a lot of, um, is it Mac E's? They call them Mac E's? Those are the Mustangs? The, the Mustang. Yeah, the uh, Fords. Ford, Fords. I've seen a lot Those of Those are not affordable, though. Yeah, they're, they're coming back up in sales. I think I've seen a lot. They're of like 40 over. plus. No, 40, 50. 50k, right? Right. I okay. mean, that's smaller than a EV9 from Kia, which is their full size three seat, three mm-hmm. row SUV. That's more like a, a, a like a larger sedan with a hatchback on it. But uh, you're saying that in even in British Columbia, um, the the uptake of EVs are, are growing in percentage, right? Uh, to over twenty percent. Wow. Of new vehicles. Wow. Right. And uh, it could even be higher than that now. Wow. Right, because in um, he, in I remember we had the podcast with Pe- Mike Petrus, and he yeah. says in Netherlands, oh, sorry, Netherlands, um, in Belgium, saying that uh, the EVs are growing, and uh, they're, they're about ten to fifteen percent. Yeah, now. Um, BC so, and Quebec are actually the highest in the entire uh, in entirety of Canada. Mm-hmm. So we're 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 heading out there where it's one in five vehicles are are, are an EV wow. off the lot. That is true. It's right? true because in like, Rich, Richmond, I think is higher. In in my in my <laughs> complex alone, and and you know, this is just a small little snapshot of of uh, Coquitlam. Uh, 
in my street alone, mm -hmm. there are four EVs just in my little part of my street mm -hmm. with 12 homes. 12 homes. So four EVs. already 25% yeah. of, of, of those homes have EVs in them. Yeah. It, it, you gotta, I mean, if, if you can understand, like most people would, I wouldn't say, I'm not sure about British Columbia, do most people drive two cars? Family. Most people have two cars. Okay. One one per person uh, to drive if, kids around. Right. So you have two cars. I, I assume mass, you know, numbers. Two cars per family. If I were you, keep one as a gas. Try one as a uh, EV. I guarantee you, the EV will save you a lot more money. <laughs> this, that's the reason why I changed. It wasn't even funny. I have I have a plug-in hybrid. Oh, great idea. Yeah, let's get that because I'm afraid that I won't be able to charge. Big mistake. We should have waited and we should have bought two EVs because that vehicle in maintenance cost alone in one year was more than my entire total cost of ownership for my vehicle, uh, my, my full EV in two and a half years. That includes all the charging and all the repairs and maintenance. And that vehicle, that's its repair costs, uh, maintenance costs. It doesn't even include the gas. The so, gas is huge. So, so hybrid is that kind of, um, the like hybrid still uses gas. Yeah. Period. It uses a tiny little battery that tries to propel it as much as possible and then charges itself on on parasitic loss of the of of, 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 of the of the uh, of, of the gas so, engine. So you're saying is the hybrid is a bit of a gimmick, not really a hey, it does cut down on on uh, on on emissions, but man, the if it was a pure pure gas vehicle, it would be way more efficient. Uh, because uh, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah. If you're if you're talking about tailpipe emissions, maybe. But you know, like I mean, even still, it's like it's the In worst. Words, if you're gonna go EV, just go all out EV. Yeah, go right. all out EV to get the most benefits because yeah. this you can't be half pregnant on this. You gotta be all the way. <laughs> That's true. It just doesn't work. If you're gonna get this, you're never going to recoup the savings. Therefore, you're going to, in your mind, think that oh yeah, this is not no. That I'm not saving anything. And oh, this is about the same as my as my gas car. No, no, no. If you go all the way uh, in your mileage on your day to day, you're gonna you're gonna notice yeah, the savings. True, true. The, the yeah. problem right now is the cost of the vehicles, and we're speaking about 25k and below vehicles. I mean, this that's, Casper from Hyundai with rebates is 15k. That's that's good price. Right? See, in, yeah. in fact, right now the average price of a gas vehicle versus an EV is only about 10 to 15 percent more with rebates. Mm, mm. You know, so why not? <laughs> For $25,000, that's definitely worth considering, especially if you're driving in a city area, which you, you know, you're not going to go long range anyway, but yeah. most of these $25,000 yeah. uh, EVs are designed for city driving. If you, if a you, gas vehicle yeah. is not two cents per kilometer to run. Mm. I'm going to tell you that a yeah. gas vehicle is not two cents per kilometer to run. <laughs> you can fear monger all you want about replacing the battery. But batteries are warranty for eight years. Okay. Yeah. Most people don't keep their vehicles for longer than that. They usually lease out by three. They probably start thinking, buy it out, probably start thinking about a new vehicle around five. How much is to replace the 12 volt battery anyway? 12 volt battery on the vehicle? Yeah. Depends. I mean, it's like $100 to like $500. Oh, there you go. That's 12 volt battery. Yeah. That's what not the <laughs> EV battery, not the high, not the high voltage pack. I mean, do you walk on onto a dealership and ask the dealer how much is it to replace the engine in this vehicle? You don't. You don't do that, <laughs> right? That's just yeah. But uh, the the EV batteries for the motors that drive the car is is warranty for like eight years anyway, right? It's at least eight years where you don't have to worry yeah. about it. after eight years. Uh, then you can you can look at uh, aftermarket replacements. We're not even at the point where we've saturated the market with uh with providers right oh yeah no yeah uh, you yeah. know like even even uh even tesla vehicles there's uh providers out in albert of all places alberta uh where they'll actually replace the cells packs four parts of the pack and the affected part of the pack they'll just replace that pack and then you're on the road again with a battery that's almost oh, so you don't have to health. replace the whole no. battery you just replace the damaged yeah. cells the problem right now is that the training Right now is in in the space where we we we've talked to BCIT uh, mm -hmm. at the fully charged show, yeah. and they have programs right now where they're actually teaching the next generation of mechanics to be both uh, internal combustion and also electric certified, and that type of skill set is coming right now. Yeah, it's being taught right now. Kids, uh, if you want to learn. Um, yeah, check out the uh, EVs and batteries and mechanical stuff. Okay. So yeah. 
Good news on EVs coming down in price, 25K, yeah. which means that used EVs will be even cheaper than that, especially very decent ones. Mm. My favorite, one of my favorites is the Bolt EV. And of course, the Kona and the Nero, Nero iDrive right now, will also probably be in that lower price range. Uh, fantastic vehicles too. I've had mine for two and a half years, no complaints. Now, let's talk about one EV startup that didn't get up and go. Yeah. Uh, and that's the so, fall of an EV startup called Fisker. Um, now, it's unfortunate, yeah. Not the scissor company, not the crafting company, not that, you know, they don't do crafting supplies. Fisker, the uh, the the motor vehicle company, F-I-S-K-E-R, this was actually their second time building EVs. The first time yeah. they actually built their, uh, the Karma was actually a sports car. Oh, right. Right? Okay. So uh, there was a dealership in Bellevue, and that's where they had these, you know, it was a fairly massive sports car. It was a hybrid at that time, powered, you know, like hybrid, electric mm -hmm. hybrid, right? <laughs> This next time, uh, they decide to go full EV. So this is Henrik Fisker and also his wife. They decide to invest full on into an EV startup. Same name. Right. And their first vehicle was the Ocean. Was that the one with the solar panels on top? Solar panels on the top. Right. Uh, the first ones hit the road in 2023, but their production targets fell short of what they wanted to make so they couldn't move enough vehicles, right? People have started to receive them uh, end of last year, this year, and now, all of them are on recall right. and they can't be sold because of that recall. Oh, and yeah. people that have them right now, they don't have any service centers. Although, um, they are, I think oh, no. some of the contractors are still going out and repairing whichever ones are on, on site, but there are thousands of, uh, Fiskers. They're still undelivered. I've seen a lot of wow. people that purchased them to flip them at full pop they're not going to get any of that money back. But as an EV, is it a good vehicle to drive? This, this, is, um, a fast. this, this, is, uh, this is where it gets a little bit dicey. Um, I think that MKBHD, the, yeah. the, 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 the <laughs> angel of death for really poor EVs, he basically said that this was the worst vehicle that he had ever driven. The Fisker was the worst vehicle that he had driven. At least the VinFast was trying. Yeah, so... But, but for him to say that, is he a car expert though? He, to say that, or is he just a, he a tech YouTuber? He does contribute to Top Gear. He's just a tech YouTuber saying, oh, I don't like this car. He likes cars. He he, he does contribute to Top Gear. Mm, okay. In the UK, not the US one, which is, <laughs> but yeah. So he contributes to that. He's he's well-versed in that. And if you watch his reviews, especially the one about the event fast, you'll realize that mm. everything that he said was everything that we said. Okay. So he's on the ball. All right. Okay. So the Fisker not being a good vehicle, probably mostly right, but no one expected them to go out of business, right? Because they were yeah. just sending out deliveries, right? Yeah. So uh, their vehicle was affordable. Uh, they're now on Facebook Marketplace for 46000 Canadian. Okay. At some of these dealerships that bought them to flip them, they're not going to get that because no there's, service. There's no service. No warranty. Uh, the company's out of business. Yeah. Right. Uh, so luckily, the the vehicle and the parts were made by Magna, which is partially a Canadian company. So if Magna decides that they can still supply parts for it, and someone wants to do that service, there could be a market for all of these Fiskers. But for right now, Henry yeah. Fisker and his wife are going through bankruptcy proceedings. They are getting authorization to fix all the vehicles and sell them all off. But who's going to buy them though? If it's that's the issue. Right? Right. That's the issue. So if, if he can sell them all off and he's also taking the pay cut, thanks, Henrik, uh, to $1 a month <laughs> or $1, $1 in total. In total. Uh, just for to the keep whole year. things going. Um, you know, and if someone decides to buy up the company and its assets, and this is production line equipment, this is not cheap stuff, mm -hmm. and they can keep things going. This might yeah, be a it's, good it's, chance for someone to get into the market. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a shame that nobody wants to pick it up because, uh, like I said, mentioned earlier, um, with so much competition in even in the EV space, you got big players like again e, uh, Volkswagen, uh, Mercedes, and, um, and Audi. I mean, yep. my, my mother in law is driving an uh, e-tron. Yep. Audi, yep. That, that's, uh, that's a really nice car. Yeah. Expensive, and, but very nice EV. <laughs> and the market yeah. is growing because yeah. Tesla, they lost market share. They sold fewer numbers, but it's not that the EV industry has dropped off the bottom. It's one player. 
Yeah. But the rest of the industry took up everything oh, yeah. that, e- that Tesla lost. It's last year when my wife picked up the ID4. Yep. There was only like maybe a few players mm-hmm. I mean, driving that car. Now, I'm seeing Everyone. the ID4s everywhere. everywhere. And the reason why is because now production has gone Supply. Out. Supply. Uh, you can, whereas before last year, uh, you, you have to wait. It's a waiting yeah. list, right? Because there was there's the, no parts. There's no like uh, electronics. They couldn't finish them, couldn't right? Build them, right? TSMC couldn't put out all the chips. <laughs> but now, uh, you want one, you can get it right away. No problem. You might there's, even be able to barter and get some no, accessories. There's no, there's no waiting list or anything. Yeah. You can get it right away. So, so yeah. good times to be a buyer, especially mm. now with all the dealerships now finally stocking up. Yeah. Again, it's yeah. not because they're sitting on the lots. It's because they were promised those allocations months years ago mm, right they, and now, now they're getting them yeah. everyone's catching up this was the way it was supposed to be so yeah. that type of fear mongering actually doesn't help anyone in fact it's a good thing because now everyone can get the ev that they want without the huge waiting list without the running around without the cloak and dagger tactics that and a lot the, of these uh, uh dealerships prices and the scalpy p- prices like mm. that's that was uh crazy and also um highly insulting to the buyers back yeah, then right yeah, yeah definitely you know so i mean lots of people paid paid prices for used teslas they are not the same price as new teslas and that's not fair so again very good thing the, the market has corrected itself yeah. more evs are going out there now and you've seen them because the same vehicle that you bought is everywhere everywhere okay it different trims everything oh. yeah so now a lot more choice so mm. too bad about fisker yeah it's you know, a shame Shame, okay. shame about Elon's it's uh, a tough employees. Market. They're all going to probably get fired anyway because they chose not to tell him the truth. <laughs> right? The crown prince of, uh, of, of trolling will, will definitely... Guys, self-driving yeah. ain't going to happen for a yeah. while. Yeah. Uh, there's lots of stuff behind it, like regulatory stuff, safety issues. Yeah. You need more satellites. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and, and, the satellites. and we decided that this was going to be a thirty-minute to forty-five-minute catch-up, and we're over almost over an hour. So I think <laughs> I think we're all caught up now. Um, yep. Don't forget to keep uh, us uh, on your subscription list because we're heading to episode number one hundred yeah. very very soon. Soon, yeah. And that yeah. episode will tell you everything that you need to know to have a successful podcast in twenty twenty-four, according to us. Sure. Uh, <laughs> which mayor? We're gonna have some solid tips for you, but you know. Well, at least Aaron actually yeah. actually watched us for the Aaron did watch yeah us. how to create a, a very popular podcast. Or yes, and, podcast. and now and now uh, the top uh, the top case <laughs> PC power and cooling manufacturer in in Europe <gasps> is now following our blueprint. Yeah, okay. there you go. So until next time, which is going to be Wednesday at noon Ooh. every week, we're going to have a new show for you. And we are a YouTube exclusive, so make sure that you keep us uh, locked on YouTube Music. Yes, and we're also on, yeah, YouTube Music. YouTube Music, so that's going to be happening. Uh, 500 million people are going to be switching over to YouTube Music by the end of the year, coming off of Google Podcast. Cannot wait for that to happen. We'll be sharing the same airways as Taylor Swift. (laughs) So Taylor Swift dropping that name here, hopefully for some... (laughs) So for some Swifties coming over here, please, <laughs> please support us. Uh, and of course, we're on uh, social at, uh, on threads at threads, our podcast show yes. and also mm-hmm. on Instagram, Instagram at our podcast show because um, Elon had a tantrum and decided he doesn't like us and he yeah. doesn't want us to be friends we're with him. We're banned from, uh, oh, have you noticed? It's not twitter.com anymore. If we type in twitter.com, it turns into x.com. Okay, finally. Yeah, x.com. There you go. Okay, you go. so uh, yeah. Hit that subscribe button because if you do, there's a there's a light show now. That's so right. hopefully that you see that, and uh, we'll see you next week Wednesday at noon. Until right. then, bye 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 bye.